We're trying, though, right? This is the time that we need to come together to try to actually be progressive, right? This is the time to fight for some of this shit. Yeah. I think we're, there, there are a lot of people trying. There's some things I think we got complacent about, though, you know? Some things that we, got, we, we didn't think that we needed to keep fighting for. America believes, because we're a Western civilization, we're a first world country, that uh, we don't, you know, we don't have to uh, get ourselves concerned about uh, uh, mental health. We just think we're great at it because we're a Western society. We're not. Mental health in this country is very regressive, if you ask me. There's a place that's trying to be progressive, though. It's a small little village in Belgium called Hale. It's spelled G E E L because they're Belgium and don't give a shit about America. <laughs> <laughs> Very small, teeny tiny little village in Belgium, right? And for the last 700 years, they've been a safe haven to the mentally ill. Yeah, they, uh, they take these people, and the way the system works is they have these doctors, these doctors meet with patients, uh, they diagnose the patients, and then they pair them up with families. Yeah. Prescription pills have now been replaced by prescription families in town. Isn't that awesome? Yeah. That's so fucking cool. Wouldn't it be amazing when you turn on NCIS and Hale instead of seeing put commercials for pills every 10 seconds, it's commercials for families? <laughs> <laughs> Just flipping through the channels and this is the commercial you see? Hello, I am the head of the Morocco household. We are a nuclear family with two children, a wife and a dog. We are a Christian family that believes in the teachings and values of Jesus Christ. We do not cherry pick from the Bible. We do not care. Uh, we do not judge you for who you are, who you love, and who you want to be. We are here to help you. We are here to take care of you. Because your success means our success. Side effects may include... <laughs> weight gain from overfeeding and extra warm pumps. <laughs> and the patient looks at that and goes, Yeah, you got one that's a little bit less touchy-feely. <laughs> <laughs> Hale is incredible. These families don't feel obligated taking in these pa uh, patient, patients, right? They want to help. They're excited to get patients into their houses, you know, to, to help these folks. It's amazing. Yeah. So it's, uh, it's incredible because that's not what we do here. <laughs> you know, there's, fuck, there's certain people I don't invite to a house party. <laughs> Shit, some of them could be Republican. <laughs> <laughs> what if they like creamy peanut butter, those monsters? <laughs> Hale doesn't care, you know. Here's the most amazing thing about Hale. The families don't know the diagnosis of the patients that they're taking in. Yeah. That's about the reaction that I get every time I make that say. Some side surprises a lot of people here when I mention that, right? Reporters were baffled by this. They asked the doctors about why the, the, these guys don't tell them the diagnosis, you know? Isn't that dangerous? Don't you think something could happen that, and you're putting the life of the family in danger? Isn't that ridiculous for you to do? And the doctors responded with, why would we do that? They're people. Let's treat them like people. That's incredible. Yeah. It's a big state. People get scared of that here, you know? There's a lot of stigma associated with mental illness, right? People freak out. They go, well, what, what if one of them has an episode, and then it's like a horror movie situation where all the lights in the house just go dark, and there's just one flickering light in the kitchen, and then the phone rings, and then we find out that the call is coming from inside the house. <laughs> yeah. Well, maybe we should pick up the fucking phone. <laughs> There might be someone that needs help on the other line, even if they are a Republican, for fuck's sake. <laughs> or at minimum, it's the electrician. You know, we need to turn the lights on. This isn't safe. <laughs> Make up the phone. <coughs> There's no judgment in hell. That's one of the biggest things uh, of why that society works. There is no judgment in hell. And in Western society, we're some judging motherfuckers, aren't we? <laughs> Yeah, tell somebody you haven't seen The Godfather and see what happens. <laughs> yeah, they'll judge you like St. Peter himself. I would not be surprised if you show up to the pearly gates and that is one of the reasons you get sent to hell. <laughs> walk up there and I'm like, oh, St. Peter, uh, open the gates. I don't know. And he's like, ah, oh, Rich, can't let you in. <laughs> you haven't seen a classic piece of American cinema. <laughs> Well, I mean, you know, I mean, I saw like the third one. <laughs> that is a one-way ticket to hell, fella. <laughs> Very judgy, yeah. 
Even what we consider to be mental illnesses is all based in judgment. You know? Do you guys know what the DSM is? Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's the Journal of Mental Disorders. Yeah. Uh, there's five of them now, right? They're on DSM 5, which is just slightly less the uh, versions of the DSM than the Bible. <laughs> We're about three versions away from having a King James DSM. <laughs> this is one of my favorite jokes in the show. It's very niche joke. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Try five times. You haven't gotten it right. You know, I feel like we're wasting paper at this point. Till 1987, according to the DSM, homosexuality was considered a mental illness. Till 1987. Fuck, Sylvester Stallone was well on his way to be an action star by then. Yeah, and that is a man that started his career doing gay porn. Do you guys know about this? Seems to be like the most shocking part of the show. Yeah, the Italian Stallion, right? Yeah, that's what the the movie was called. How do I know this? Well, my sister told me about it. <laughs> she texted me saying she wants to watch the movie with me. Which, yeah, you know. <laughs> I'm not going to judge her on her choices of cinema, because let's be honest, I'm curious about the film, too. <laughs> Is that where Sylvester's acting chops began? Let's find out, you know? <laughs> but there's just some shit you don't come back from, and that's one of them. <laughs> A gay porn is what funded Rocky, and that's hilarious to me because Rocky is one of the most masculine machismo movies of heterosexuality ever made, and it was funded by gay porn. <laughs> that's amazing. Yeah. It's ridiculous. 1987, well, homosexuality was still considered a mental illness, which means that you could get sent to the loony bay for wearing a lavender shirt. <laughs> or shit, just knowing what lavender was. <laughs> Till the mid-90s, women could be diagnosed with hysteria. Till the mid-90s. And then we just figured out that is called being in a relationship. <laughs> Gender dysphoria is still in the DSM, and now this should not be confused with the transgender movement. They are two different things, but gender dysphoria is often used as a weapon against the transgender community. How do I know this? Well, I got into a Twitter fight about it. <laughs> yeah, I, um, I decided to go after Pat McCrory, right? He's the um, Republican governor of uh, North, Car North Carolina. They put out the HB2 bill. He put out the bathroom bill, right? So I figured if you're going to put out a bathroom bill, I'm going to say some shitty things about you. Uh, yeah. Right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. A very religious man from Texas came to his aid very quickly. And we went back and forth on Twitter for like a day and a half. And finally, he throws the gender dysphoria argument at me. And I said, look, man, just because it's in a book doesn't mean it's right. Maybe we should be looking at how they treat other human beings around them. That should be what we judge their values on. You know, maybe we should do that instead of just going by what some book tells us to do. Then he threw some religious shit at me. I called him a cunt and I got out of there. This <laughs> is not my proudest moment. <laughs> Symptoms of gender dysphoria, according to DSM, are disgust in one's own genitals, uh, depression, and isolation from society. Let's take a pause for a minute and take a look at those three things, right? Depression and isolation from society, yeah, that might not be the individual's fault. Maybe we should look at the society doing the depressing and isolating and talk to them first. <laughs> yeah. And I don't think it's as much disgust in one's own genitals, right? A ketchup and mayonnaise sandwich, that's disgusting. <laughs> Wanting to be who you are on the inside and out, that's not disgusting. That's not sick either. Yeah, society keeps trying to pull this shitty Jedi mind trick on transgender people, right? These are the genitals you're looking for. <laughs> piece of flesh is God's gift to humanity. <laughs> Walking around going to dip in gold. Ugh. Probably not a healthy choice. <laughs> I think it's a biohazard now, frankly. You're probably sterile. That might be a good thing. <laughs> if you consider 
gender euphoria to be a mental illness, hypermasculinity will finally be a, a symptom of a much larger problem, right? A bar brawl could mean that you could get put into a, a fucking loony bin. And then people will shame you about your genitals, and then you will have gender dysphoria. Oh. Yeah. I still don't know how we haven't considered uh, over-patriotism and over-nationalism a fucking mental illness in this country, right? Yeah. I feel like if you come out and just spew this nationalistic rhetoric of America is the fucking best country in the whole goddamn world, alright? We're number one, and we'll always be a number one. America is the best goddamn country in the whole fucking world. Uh, I don't know if you've met a lot of countries. <laughs> You, you have a passport? Why would I fucking need a passport when I'm already in the best country? <laughs> Don't worry about that though. I do have the solution for it. It's a it's a healthy dose of flag burning and uh, uh, and reading um, just fucking anything. Just read, just read something. Just anything. I don't give a shit. Just fucking stop something. Bro. Okay. Just read something. You know. Yeah. No judgment in hell. <laughs> None of those things really exist. Hell works on trust, too. That's another big thing that, that hell works on. Trust is hard to find in Western society, right? Go say hello to a stranger when they look up to their, from their phone and be like, what do you want? What's happening? Okay, can somebody get a cops? Because this guy's trying to be friends. <laughs> <laughs> we do a lot of backward shit in our society, don't we? A lot of backward shit. I don't think it's working, you know? One of the things we do to help mentally ill people in this country is uh, we put them in a padded room and give them pills to pad their brain. That's what we do. That's the solution to the mental health issue in this country. <laughs> Guys, we are social creatures. We need each other. So why is our solution that in our lowest moment, we are going to take you away from the thing you need most? How long can we keep going and surviving when we keep doing this backward shit that isn't solving anything? Exacerbating the problem. So people in Hale don't get a lot of money. They do it out of the goodness of their heart, you know? They don't get a lot of money for doing it. These are full families, multi-generational families taking on one to two people for over 28 years. That's how long some of these patients will stay with the family. You get a couple hundred bucks a month. That's all it is. Do you know how much our war budget is right now? That's what I'm going to call it, by the way. I'm going to call it a war budget. I refuse to call it a defense budget because what the fuck are we defending ourselves from? Yeah. Is it education? Yeah. It's not an education, right? <laughs> Our war budget right now is $827.4 billion. Billion. With a B. You know what that tells me? It tells me that it's a lot easier to take care of each other than convince somebody to go to a country they've never been to and kill a bunch of people they've never met. Tells me that, that that peace and taking care of each other and giving a shit about one another is a lot more economically viable than killing each other. Tells me that patriotism is expensive, but empathy is always on sale. Yeah. It's ridiculous. Thank you.